Welcome to the bold analysis. Ladies and gentlemen, how did Ray Ludinga maneuver his way to the CBD? Is a mystery. How he maneuvered his way is a mystery that I want us to unravel. And I think uh, just following uh, the developments around Saba Saba, I think Ray had a long day, but he's been in this for quite sometime the kind of courage that odinga have i don't really think even those who are asking him to leave the space are willing to take it from him immediately he announced that the uh, protesters or rather those who are in kamkunji to meet at the nairobi central business park the police were ticked, were tipped to block his way. And when the convoy left Kamkunje, I wanted to look at this video. This is a video of Kenyans. These are not protesters. Kenyans that turned out in large numbers. And they were ready and willing to accompany Royal Odinga all the way to um, to Nairobi CBD. It is a very clear indication about people's power. I was telling, um, I was talking, you know, I, I was there and um, good, I had a police officer who was a very good friend was telling me that Kevin, no, <laughs> uh, if I see police trying to block protesters, you know, it was a very funny statement. But then, <laughs> that was in relation to Ikitu Ata Mimi nimekuwa affected. So I'm not going to be part of it. Now, when the police left, check this video. They were, when, when Ray Lodinga convoy left Kamkunji, they were surrounded by the police. Both side of Kamkunji, for those who know, and Bele on the other side, heading to Kariako. But people braved. And immediately, then police then lobbed tear gas there. It was a bit of running battles between the police and um, the protesters. But you know, they didn't know where Raila was. And uh, someone had just come home, I was speaking to cubs. And they were actually saying that were live bullets. Um, I wanted to check this. Um, I wanted to check this photo that has just been shared with by Royla. This photo. This is live bullet. Vitu zikarushwa into that car. Another attempt, and we are going to look at. I'm going to look at this. Eh? I'm going to look at the attempted um, attacks on Raila. So you can see it was all attempt on him and the convoy. But what they didn't know is that he changed the cars in the middle of all that. And in fact, uh, those were the very, the car that was just behind the media vehicle were actually saying that were most targeted because the police always thought they thought that Rela was there. But somehow, <laughs> Rela disappeared. And you know that's the meaning of a guambo. By 3.50 PM, Raila stormed Nairobi CBD. How did he maneuver the protesters? That is what when Regatha Gashag and William Ruta are seated because the information that Raila has reached CBD really caught them off guard. They were like, how? Even though police engaged protesters within town in some running battles, after they were dispersed, they devised alternative routes, different entry points to town, and it became difficult then even to manage because they made their way to CBD. There are some three loopholes that played out. And uh, I think, they're, 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 I don't want to call them loopholes, but I want to say the scenarios that played out, but I think the police never saw that. Number one, it is very clear that Sabasaba happened at a time the security sector is experiencing some deep divisions. 
the IG promoted some officers and the NPS National Police Service Commission is against those promotions. And so just in that context, there are a contingent of security officers that have benefited from a promotion. But that has also planted some seeds of discord within the police system. And Rhino Dinga really made his way because of an inside aid from the insiders that guided his route and how he was going to make his way because it was if in fact in fact he was very predictable you know many instances he has never said where am i going many instances the other first face used to come out from somewhere and it's like he's going to cbd that but that when he left kamkuji saying we are going to pass x so even the state knew very well i was i was in kamkunji with another police friend of mine he was telling me kevin who mzee amefanya makosa you know he has said he has said it i, I wish you would have just said let's meet in town he has said it but and so it was very predictable because he made his destination very predict predictable it was very clear that he was not going to make his way before you look at the second scenario that played in favor of Ray Lodinga I wanted to look at this lady here she's called Sara she passed on 26th she passed on on 26th July, uh, June in Kenyatta Hospital after suffering acute leukemia for nearly one year for those who are new in this channel I really some were really asking Kevin who is Sara we supported her with a, in a in a fundraiser to support her with a bill of nearly 1.3 million but unfortunately we lost her and uh, because the family is overwhelmed, we decided that we can do the last challenge and finish it uh, by supporting them to at least be able to make the burden lighter on last expense. He has also left behind a child and also um, a medical bill uh, to the last moment where after she was rushed to the hospital. So. That is why we are doing this challenge and uh, it's just short. I think we are remaining with some five days because we're ending next week on Wednesday. The second scenario that played in favor of Ray Lodinga is police, uh, the security officers got a little bit overwhelmed with the number of protesters. The number was huge. You know, I was in Kamkunji for, I think like I was there for 30 minutes. I arrived some few minutes to then Raila. Raila's convoy got its way there. That number was very huge. And it was a mixture. In fact, it was a mixture of the natural crowd and the classified. These ones that when you look over here, you can And I think you can see a couple of videos in this podcast that I took with my phone. So it's, it's very clear that that number that had left... Police got a little bit overwhelmed because as much as you want to disperse them, but there is also a probability of causing stampede. And because of that, quite a number devised different means of getting to town. Then a uh, second scenario that played and many people did not know, I can ask you to check the social media page of Kenya Human Rights yes, Body Commission. There are also a host of civil society organizations that were supporting Saba Saba. And because of that, it is most likely that uh, Raila Dinga got his way, but was easily changed from a vehicle that belongs to one of these politicians even to another vehicle from the, from the civil society organizations. And these civil society organizations, you know, they had given it... Um, the nod, you know, the, the, they were part and parcel of the Saba Saba, so, and that's where the protests really happened across the country. That was there, and it was really bolstered. In fact, even in terms of the way it was oiled, even the way it could have been funded, it is something that you cannot underestimate. But why did the police fear uh, the fact that Raila could get to CBC? CBD. Why do you think there is that fear? Because um, of 
over time for the last first phase one of the things that security officers used to do is to ensure Raila does live there there, there are some two reasons why they were so committed about stopping Raila getting to CBD. Number one, they were not sure because what was the next stop after Central Park? State House Road is not very far from Central Park. You know, I was just talking to... I was talking to... We're just having some peer talk about reflection of 2017. Do you remember the crowd that was in Uhuru Park when Raila Odinga was doing that uh, mock swearing in? If Raila wanted to storm State House, what do you think would have stopped him? He would have stormed State House then. But because the negotiation about the handshake was already somewhere in the background, that is why even the police were withdrawn from Uhuru Park. But the state intelligence knows very well that with the crowd backing, the crowd, if they arrive at Central Park, they're simply telling, why Central Park? They're simply telling you we can be headed to State House. So they were so keen because they would highly be overwhelmed Sito is not very far from there. And again, you know, that means that even those who are using Wayekwe will make their way, those who are coming from Kibera will make their way, and it's going to turn something different. Number two. Um, Raila was going to paralyze. And in fact, he paralyzed CBD. I've always been saying, uh, I've always been making this political, this observation across when, when these protests are held that the police try to condone, condone CBD and creating a picture that, okay, they're not disturbed or nothing has happened. But that has never been the real picture. The little thing here is, whenever there is that protest, Nairobi CBD is normally a deserted place. Now, with them going to meet at Central Business District, I'm very clear that uh, they were going to paralyze town. And truth be told, even amongst the protesters, there are criminal elements. Criminal elements that were there. But, you know, it did not, um, and, and, and they would take advantage. Now, I realized something. In the morning, there are some tires that were burnt around um, Thicker Road. And I saw a couple of government bloggers blaming Azimio for having done that. But I think there was a plan to plant goons in the street just to wreak havoc and create the narrative of destruction. But it backfired. I'm waiting for the day protests will be held without police interference and see what exactly will happen. I really want to see if things would actually go wrong. Thank you.